Hello, so I am going to read Emily Bennington's Course Companion Notes for Day 43, Section 10, The Real Power of the Mind, Chapter 2, Right Defense and Release from Fear. I had every, well, I had thought about getting up early this morning and doing it, but I did not. So here we are. It's a little bit late, but that's okay. This week we are focusing on understanding the power of our thoughts, creation and miscreation, the mastery of love, and developing a regular practice of study. Day 43, the real power of the mind. Overview. Our thoughts, far from being idle, have tremendous power, so much power, in fact, that we prefer to deny the mind's true ability because we are literally afraid of it. Jesus wants us to harness and use the power of the mind in two key ways. First, he wants us to guard our thoughts as much of the time as possible so that we stop our minds from producing fear. We think fear just happens, but he makes it very clear here that fear is the result of our unguarded thoughts. Sorry about that noise. Emotion doesn't just happen. It's the result of thought. He's concerned not with how the mind does or doesn't manifest things. He's concerned with how it constantly produces our emotions. He implies that if we could just watch our thoughts all the time, we would see exactly how they produce the fear that we live in. And we can, if we and if we can guard our thoughts all the time, we can live free of that fear. Robert Perry. Reflections: When you think of the real power of the mind, do you think of manifestation and visualizing? This is certainly how we've been trained in self-help and empowerment circles, but the course never encourages us encourages us to use the power of our mind to obtain the things you desire in the world. Jesus wants you to guard your thoughts so you can help him save the world. In other words, he's not just asking us to move from dysfunctional to functional thinking. He's asking us to move from functional to miraculous. At which end of this scale do you see yourself and why? exercise. In paragraph 8 of this section, Jesus notes that he doesn't intervene between our thoughts and their results, our emotions, because it would be tampering with the basic law of cause and effect. He goes on to say that his goal is not to depreciate the power of our thinking, but to remind us to guard our thoughts carefully so we can be miracle workers and avoid miscreating. How carefully would you say you guard your thoughts? Experiment with watching your mind today and write what you discover somewhere. Write it wherever you want. Key passages. The mind is a very powerful agent and it never loses its creative force. It never sleeps. Every instant it is making or creating and always as you will. You who complain about fear still persist in producing it most of the time. Fear cannot assail unless it has been elected. Thank you for joining with me for Day 46, Course Companions, Section 10 of Chapter 2, Right Defense and Release from Fear. These are the Course Companion Notes for Day 43. I think I may have said 42, but it's day 43. Thank you. (laughs) I get that all mixed up. I apologize. I love you.